Praise the Lord and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I'm Bob Fowler and what a privilege and honor it is for me to be able to spend a few moments with you wherever you're at, whatever you're doing. I pray that you're able to kind of tune everything else out and just focus on what we're going to talk about today. I won't be long, but I believe that what we have to say today is relevant to your particular situation. Let's get right into this today. The question, the title rather, is in a question. Are you believing big enough? Now, before you turn the message off and feel like, oh, I can't take one more thing on me that I have to do, the challenge for all of us is not so much what we do, but what we allow God to do in our lives. Think of this for for just a moment. Satan has already been taken care of. He cannot prevent or stop God from doing what he wants to do. The only thing that can hinder him, slow him, stop him, prevent him from doing what he wants to do in all of our lives is whether we believe or whether we do not believe. What we allow him to do through us walking, talking, standing by faith, or what we do sometimes, which is doubt, which is question, which is back up. It is only then that we can hinder or slow what God wants to do in our life. You say it cannot be so. It it is so. The scripture that I have quoted oftentimes, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, O that I would have gathered you unto myself. In other words, O that I would have done something miraculous in your life, but he said you would not. Think of this. The the Bible says that when he went in, he, he was only able to heal a few sick people. Why? Because there was only a few sick people believing him. Not looking at, and this is something that I would like to interject today. So often we are challenged to focus on one of two things. Either focus on what we're going through, what we're struggling with, what we're dealing with, what we're trying to believe God for in our present situation, or we look at what God is, who he is, and his ability to perform the impossible, what we would consider to be impossible. Because to be honest with you, there are no impossibilities in our life. The word of God says with man, it may be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So I want to encourage you today, rather than looking at what you're challenged by, what you're going through, this season may be difficult for you, but rather than looking at it, why don't you take the attitude of in everything I'm going to give thanks for. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for my life. You're you're look you're wondering what is the will of God for my life? The will of God is for us to always give thanks in everything. Now, I I believe that when we read scripture, we should look at it word by word, line by line. It didn't say give thanks for everything. It said in everything give thanks. Thanks. So I want to encourage you, whatever you're going through, whatever the challenge, whatever the the difficulty may be, the pressure, whatever it may be today, that just kind of is always at the back of your mind. I want to encourage you, be thankful in him. Be thankful that you're not helpless, you're not hopeless, you're not without strength or a place to run to. You have your relationship with the Lord. And my friend, if you have your relationship, if you have a relationship with God through what Christ has done, you are way ahead of things. If God be for you, who can be against you? Let's get into this for just a a few moments. Are you believing big enough? In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, we see these words that the Holy Spirit is communicating to each of us today. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according or in agreement with the power that is at work in us right now. When you look that word 
uh, power up, that word power is dunamis. It's the same word that we have developed our name for dynamite. And we know that dynamite, whenever there's a difficult challenge or difficulty, they put dynamite into the earth to, in order to break up something that they would not be able to do any other way. And so when we think about what we're challenged by, the season that we're in, the impossibility, what, what, what man has deemed to be impossible in and for your life. Maybe people today have looked at you and said, well, that's a great dream. That's a nice notion, but it'll never happen for you. Oh, God might use somebody else, but certainly he will not use you. Remember, my friend, we cannot despise the days of, spa, of small beginnings. And what would a beginning be to some that they would consider to be small? Maybe it's just a word from the Lord. And I don't say just a word from the Lord to make it, to, to minimize it or to make it insignificant. No, sometimes in the midst of adversity, in the midst of challenges, in the midst of financial problems that are pressing in on you, sometimes a word, what, I mean, what is a word from the Lord? Except you take it by faith. You see, a word from the Lord in and of itself is just a word from the Lord. And I don't, and again, I don't mean to minimize that or to make that appear to be or sound to be like something that is not more than enough. It absolutely is. But the enemy will come in and make you feel like, well, you, you say that you are healed or you say that you're blessed or you say if you were blessed or if you were healed or if you were prospered, why would these things presently be in your life or coming against your life? Well, we are called to walk by faith and not by sight. You see, one of the things that early on I had to learn, and every one of us have to learn this, is that our relationship with God, especially, well, let me not even say especially, it concerns everything. Everything, we have to take God's, God's promises, God's word by faith. Now, the world will minimize faith. Well, you know, it's good. You exercise your faith once in a while when you go to church. Uh, maybe when you bless your food, you can exercise your faith. But to step out on God's promises and to believe God, that if God made a promise to you, not only is he able to make a promise to you, but he's able to bring about and fulfill that promise in your life. The scripture we just read in Ephesians 3.20, not only is God able to do what you're believing and asking for, but my friend, God is able to supersede even what he has promised you and do exceeding and abundantly above all that we'd ever ask or think according or in agreement with the power, which is the Holy Spirit that is at work with in you. Did you know that before God ever gave you the promise that you knew about, God put the faith within you to believe, to bring that promise about? Now, you may be brought right down to the place that you're just going to have to declare that. God, I thank you that you love me so much that you would never give me a promise that you would not have already given me the faith to believe and bring that promise to pass in my life, full term, nothing left out, nothing lacking, nothing missing. We have to talk to ourselves, and it is important what we say to ourselves. And I've asked this question before, what do you say when you talk to yourself? Do you tell yourself things like, if God gave me a promise, he also gave me the faith to bring about that promise into full maturity in my life? For some of you, God, th this idea of, of do we believe God big enough or am I believing God big enough, some of you right now are in a season that you, if it had not been for the faith that God has put within you to believe for that promise that he's, because some of you, God has made some 
far outreaching, far beyond the natural capability or ability that you possess to bring it about. God has given you a promise. Maybe it's a son or a daughter coming back home. Maybe it's a, a dream or a vision concerning ministry. Maybe it has something to do that nobody except you and God knows about. But here you are, you have been walking out the promises of God's word through faith, and patience and declaring that God is not a man that he would not he would lie to me if God made me the promise he is not only a promise maker he is a promise keeper in Matthew chapter 16 verse 15 through 19 Jesus says to the disciples he says but he, he had asked prior to this verse you know, who do men say that I am? Well, some say that you're Elias, some say that you're Elijah, some say that you're this prophet. And Jesus says, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the anointed one, the one that the prophets of old prophesied would come. And they, they prophesied that there would be a Messiah that would be born into the earth, a virgin birth. That is who you are. Well, you talk about just declaring without any extras, who Jesus is in the earth and who he is to us, Peter caught this revelation. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And also I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Now let me just stop and say something. Jesus was not saying this so that they would go out and begin to create physical structures. This is the church of Peter. This is the second church of Peter. This is the third church of Peter. No, it's the revelation that Peter got from God that Jesus was the Christ. Now, why am I bearing down on that? Because my friend, the day that we're living in, you're going to hear a lot of people Pray beautiful prayers, but the one thing that is lacking is that name. Oh, in the name of God, we, we pray. In the name of all that is holy, we pray. They, they'll, they, they'll say everything and get close enough, but they will not declare the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because the word says that his name is an offense his name is what makes sicknesses die and fall off. His name is what makes devils tremble. His name is where the authority of the believer lies because when we declare that name of Jesus, we're not just speaking a name, we're declaring the authority and the office that that, whole, that, that, that name means. And so when we say in the name of Jesus, we remind all that is unholy, all that is impure, all that rages and battles and comes against us, that our hope, our trust, our victory, our declaration and proclamation is in that name. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says every tongue will confess and every knee shall bow that he is Lord. You see, when we pray and we do not invoke that name, we be, we, our prayers are not effective. However, when we pray and we begin or use throughout the body of our prayer or conclude with that name, we are reminding ourselves and reminding everything that opposes us and God's will in our lives that Jesus is the victor, Jesus is triumphant, and Jesus is coming again, my friend. Let's move on in this. Not believing God big enough. Jesus went on to say, and also I say that your people Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. 
Now, why do I ask the question, are you believing God big enough? Because when we begin to think about how large, how huge, how magnificent, how Genesis 17, 1 says he's the almighty God, how, how, how victorious and authoritative the God that we serve is when we begin to meditate on him and who he is and who he has allowed us to be as one of his family, the question must arise, am I believing God big enough? Am I spending too much time on things that I have already received victory over? Am I asking God for something that I've already been given? Should we, rather than asking God for peace, should we thank God that we have already received peace? Rather than asking God for healing, shouldn't we rather say thank you that you are the God that already has healed me of all of my illnesses, sicknesses, and diseases? When we begin to think about how big God is in comparison to the challenges that come against us. The Bible says that in the last day that the kings of the earth will walk by Satan and they will gaze upon him and ask the question, is this he who troubled the nations? So often the enemy will magnify and make something so much larger to us than it really is. I wonder if we were to sit down with Jesus and have a conversation with him, if he would say, why are you troubled? Why are you worried? Didn't I overcome the world? Didn't I bring you along by faith for the ride? Because my victory is your victory. My hope is your hope. My trust is your trust. My faith is your faith. My peace is your peace. So often I think it is, is because that We carry a load and a burden and a care and a weight on us that we were never meant to carry. In closing, I'm, I'm reminded today that when you look at livestock and you look at the animal kingdom, did you know that sheep were never intended to be load bearing animals? Other animals, oxen, cows, other beasts of the field. God created them to carry loads and carry cares. But do you know that sheep are not one of them? What does he call us? He calls us the sheep of his pasture. My friend, I want to encourage you to do what Peter encourages us to do. Casting all of your care, the weight, the burden, the load, Either it could be financial, it could be emotional, it could be a physical care, casting all of your care upon him. Why? Because he cares so much for you and you were never intended and created by God to carry and walk around with weights and cares on your shoulders. I want to encourage you, my friend, cast all of your care upon the Lord because he cares for you and never forget, you can never believe God big enough. His word promises that you and your household shall be saved. Believe for everyone in your household because God has made provision and given you faith to do that. Are we believing God big enough? Probably not. Because I believe that the once we catch a revelation and walk in and think in how big and magnificent our God truly is, our faith will grow, our peace will grow, our joy will grow, and our rest in him will grow, knowing that he is a God, that heaven is his throne, and earth is his his footstool. Let's believe God. Amen. As we begin this new week, let's believe him as never before and make sure that our confession reflects what we're believing him for. Well, before I say goodbye, I want to thank you so very much for the opportunity to bring before you uh, the opportunity to be able to sow into the ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship 
ministry. I, I, I want to thank those of you that have considered, that have prayed about it, and still are. But I'd like to encourage you at, at the end of this program to go into the description section and look at the several ways that we have put there. Very easy for you to be able to be a blessing and to be supportive of this ministry. We believe that it's God's will and plan and purpose because of what Christ has done upon the cross and in the resurrection that you and I are called to live a life of peace and not of fear. And that is why we declare boldly the good news of a life without fear. Whatever you do, big or small, thank you so very much. But until tomorrow at 12 Eastern time, I love you. God loves you. And as always, my friend, never, ever forget, he is faithful. God bless you.